All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined from Denver, Colorado by Carl Becker. How are you doing, Carl? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Of course. And Carl has founded and run numerous companies over the last 30 years, now runs Improving Sales Performance, a consultancy that supports sales organizations to build high-performing teams and achieve their revenue goals. He's the author of Set Up to Win, Three Frameworks to a High-Performing Sales Organization and Sales and Marketing Alignment. And now, October 31st, I think is correct, Carl, the new book, Iceberg Selling, comes out? Yes, and I'm thrilled. It's uh, my favorite of the three. Fantastic. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the the uh, concept of iceberg selling. So first of all, like Carl, give me the genesis to the title. Why iceberg selling? Yeah. Well, I feel like, you know, in, in all my years of being a consultant, uh, one thing's always in common. I'm talking to salespeople, sales leaders, and they're just wondering, you know, how can my, how can my team get, you know, more successful? How can I create lift points? And sometimes mm -hmm. lift points is just how do I hit my close rate, right? How do I increase my long-term value? I think so much of it comes down to if you really understand fully a scenario, you know, what someone's world is like, first off, you set yourself, you know, uh, up as different than your competitors. You're putting in the time to really understand what's going on, but everybody likes to feel uh, understood and connected mm -hmm. and seen. And what I really try to encourage salespeople to do is invest that time. So all of this kind of came forward from, I realized that when I was selling, for myself and all the different companies I had and all the trainings I was doing, I was already doing what I call iceberg selling. I was looking below the surface. I was trying to learn everything that was going on, not just what was shown to me, not just with what was above the surface. If right. you were that 10%. And so uh, as I started to work on this book, uh, originally it was going to be about just different sales stories and lessons. And I was like, wait a minute, there's something here in kind of this whole image of an iceberg. I can get yeah. my head around that. Other people can too. And so there we had it, you know, it turned into iceberg selling. I didn't know that that was the methodology that I was coming up with, uh, but I was already doing it. And that's, uh, that's what happened. Yeah. And it's funny, um, Carl, because um, somebody was telling me recently that they, they did some events or some whatever uh, with some people and they got the feedback afterwards. And somebody else told me about some research that was done lately. And the two things were exactly the same. What you just said is that People people crave to be seen, heard, and understood, and it's as simple as that. That's not didn't say that was easy, but it's as simple as that. People want to be seen, heard, and understood. Absolutely. So, what is your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I totally think about that, right? Like, I, one of the things that I love about I kind of became an accidental consultant. I'd run all these different companies. Um, I was running an outbound company where we would do like appointments and you know do business development beha on behalf of a lot of other companies. And I started to realize that, um, you know, what what was happening is I was I would start to work with these salespeople, and they just wanted to go right to the transaction. They just mm -hmm. wanted to go to the thing that they wanted to sell. And I was like, wait, we need to kind of back up. And in my coaching, I started to kind of get into companies and build teams instead of bringing my team in. And what was in common for all of them was just uh, the, the team. Sometimes the salespeople were, were misunderstood. Uh, and I think that's the whole point about being seen. Like first it starts with the salesperson. To yep. me, if we're coaching someone up, like what are their strengths? What are their skills? We can't just have every salesperson be like fit into a mold. We all have yes. our different unique skills. So like I started to bring that forward and I'd see this great success, you know, salespeople that were kind of on the chopping block. All of a sudden we'd start to talk about seeing them for who they were and bringing those skills forward and boom, they would start to sell better and we'd keep them around and all of a sudden they'd, you know, they'd, they'd be a rising star. And so mm -hmm. that, that being understood, I think starts with everyone we talk about yeah, uh, and everyone we talk to. And, and that's one reason I say everybody, everything is an iceberg, right? The more we understand, the more effective we can be at being a human and connecting with them and then guiding things forward. And I think, uh, no, I, th I think it's a really important point there. And I think uh, th the other part there that you touched upon is that idea of focusing on the strengths of people, because for some reason, as humans, we're hardwired to just see things that aren't working. And we're so fast, like, oh, it's not working. And you're immediately, yeah, fix this, fix that. Or you need to do more of this, more of that. But we're really bad at like focusing on what people are really good at and say, why do I want them to do more of the stuff that they're rubbish at? Why don't I get them to do more of the stuff that they're actually good at? And then everybody wins. Exactly. Exactly. Like I had a coaching client 
uh, a couple months ago, and she was doing pretty well in her work. She had kind of a biz dev account executive role to going out, finding new opportunities, new people to, you know, kind of cultivate up and to see if they can work together or not. And she was doing okay. But one thing that I always do is I try to understand people's origin stories. And she told mm. me the story about being in college, doing really well, and then switching from one major to a really hard major. This happened to be engineering. And within about a year, she got kicked out of the program. The grades just weren't there. Uh -huh. And her parents asked her to go back home. And she said, I'm staying here for me. And ownership thinking is a piece of this book, this ownership mindset. And so I'm working with her and I was like, well, what did you do? And she goes, I decided to go to the community college. I got a job. I paid for everything myself. I took all the classes I needed to do. I got A's and then I applied again and I got in and then I graduated with that. Uh -huh. I said, what did that yeah. for you? She's like, that's what I wanted. And I was like, well, what do you want now? What are you playing for? That's how this book opens up. It's like, what are you playing for? And she's like, well, I want to have a career. I want to be in President's Club. I want to buy a house. I was like, well, why don't you put that same ownership, that same intentionality, that drivership that you had back in college into this job? And I got to tell you, every time I coach her now, I get all warm and fuzzy because she's killing it mm -hmm. um, because she owned it herself. The, the, the way she was supposed to be doing it wasn't working for her, but she had, she dug in deep, owned her own reality and made it happen. And a big part of the book explores that as well. So I, I love mm -hmm. watching people win. It's one of my favorite things. Yeah. And, and there's so much uh, in, my, in that story that you just told there, to be perfectly honest, some such great uh, insights. The first thing, um, Carl, is the why. You said, you know, why, what are you playing for? Why? And I think that's a question, not just salespeople. I think everybody needs to ask themselves that. But, uh, you know, why are you doing what you're doing? It's, and if you just say, well, you know, I need to earn money. to, That's not why you're doing it. That is part of the reason, but it's not the central reason why you're doing what you do. And you need to uncover that. Absolutely. And I think many salespeople, if, if we ask your listeners, you know, what do you love about your job? They're going to say, I love relationships. I mm. love helping people. I love feeling like I have the answer. And so right. then a lot of times I turn that around like, well, when does that happen? When I have really great conversations. OK, so why don't we play for really great conversations, not just, hey, can I make my quota? Can I make my right. goal? Like, let's play for the thing that causes the other thing. But if we're playing for what fills us up. I mean, in sales, we know momentum creates momentum. So yep. find your yep. own momentum and unlock that. And uh, I love that. Like I said, I love to watch people win. And I think that's a big part. You got to understand your why. You got to understand what you're playing for and then do everything you can to stay there. Yeah. And then the point of, uh, as you said, the the self-leadership thing, I think that was fantastic because that's the thing is people don't realize that, that the first part of being a good leader is leading yourself, right? And you don't need teams. You don't need anybody. But leading yourself is, is very, very important. That idea of, of self-leadership, and particularly in a sales role, I mean, we call them salespeople, salespreneurs, because they are the entrepreneurs in organizations. They're normally the only ones who've got variable comp, maybe completely very. So they have to get creative. So I love that. I love that idea of, of, uh, of self-leadership and being creative because you need to own it because you have a very different job than everybody else. Exactly. And it's funny. I was talking to, I run a peer group of people that run marketing agencies. Mm -hmm. And this was just last week and they were kind of talking about how come, and watch my words here, how come my account managers aren't owning this more? How come they aren't kind of realizing that our success is our client's success? And I said, well, let's just start with a simple concept. What if we change the name from account manager to account leader? Mm. There was kind of this like, whoa, aha. And I was like, because if we want them to lead these accounts they're managing, lead them to success, then we need to help them understand they are leaders. So that means ownership, drivership, you know, removing obstacles, being able to advocate, co-create, bringing things forward like a leader does, not just saying, how, how are we doing? Here's the timeline. Here's the project management. Here's the sauna. We're on track. That That's not creating outcomes, right? Um, and so I really encourage them to start changing the way they describe their people to account leaders. And I think there was some traction there. Yeah. Oh, I, I I would agree because I think like there's a huge difference between management and leadership, um, both psychologically and in the and I think how we think about it and in obviously how you execute. So it is important that people understand what leadership means and the fact that I love that concept of account leader because you're you're leading the transfer of value and the success and all of that. And that should be something that you're proud of and that you want to be. You want to own that part. Right. Totally. I mean, if you think about. Uh, first, I love what you said. And, and But if you think about most people in account or sales, they they love relationships. They love mm -hmm. people. They love feeling understood. They love understanding other people. 
So you kind of go, okay, in this account manager setting, well, don't you want to understand their success? Don't you want to understand what's going to make them happy and create value? I mean, ultimately, that's why they started to work with us in sales. We're just guiding people to how we think we can solve their problem, how we can create value. And so let's let's keep that kind of energy and that focus going all down the chain. And I think for account managers, it is like that, like, like get in there, get just mm -hmm. as dirty and, you know, shoulder to shoulder with these people than as we do as salespeople, because because that's what creates success when you're there seeing that person for who they are, yeah. you're aligning with what they need and you're bringing that value. Yeah. And I think one of the other things that, uh, you know, we've become great over the years at our personas and target personas. And sometimes it's almost like we've made these like non-human things, you know, these, these really? representations when the fact is, yeah, you may be dealing with a number of people in the buying process, which is normal for, for B2B and bigger ticket items, but each person has a personal motivation. Yes, they all have company motivation. They all have maybe their department motivation or what their, yeah. their role or whatever, but they also have a personal motivation because in any B2B sale, you are, you, people who are buying are putting a little bit of themselves on the line there too. And that's something I think people often overlook. I agree. And it gets back to that kind of whole iceberg concept. Yeah. Right? I think too often as humans, whether we're selling or just kind of like interacting even with our family, we're only looking above what's above the surface, which is about 10%. And as we yeah. start to get curious and stay present and ask open-ended questions, and I'm going to say build rapport, we start to see more and more and more of that. And it, and when we do, we get someone's world. You know, and I think one of the things I like to do, if, if, if you were a sales manager and we were kind of coaching, I would say, I want you to go to your top three salespeople. I want you to kind of tell them the account they're working on. And then I want you to say, not, do you think we're going to win this? Or do you think we're going to close it? But tell me about their world. And I'm mm -hmm. going to bet you that your best salespeople are going to be like, oh yeah, this and this and this and this, and this is how it affects this person. But then you're going to go to kind of your mid-tier salespeople and they're, they're not going to know that answer. Mm -hmm. and, and it's so, it's so basic. The more you learn about somebody, the more you understand them, the stronger relationship you have, the more rapport you have, the more you can be of service and guide them forward because you know what their reality is like, you know their world. And so, um, yeah, I mean, back to kind of what you're saying, it's so important to understand as much as you can before you move anything forward. No, I I, I agree. And I think there are, there's a couple of things. I think number one is you have to be curious, right? And you have to be kind of, in, in many ways, the most successful are insatiably curious about the business of business about the business of their customer and and about the personal you know the, the business and personal circumstances of, of their buyers but it's that it's that curiosity i think that drives the best people yeah absolutely and it's funny i'll, I'll tell you a, a quick story i was running an exercise with the team and i said that this happened to be a team that pro provided professional services to cpas so cpas have national conferences so that's kind of the backstory so i just said in this exercise I want you to imagine you can talk to anyone you want that's at this conference or going to this conference. What would you, what would you, if you met them, what would you say? And the young sales guy goes, I would be in the coffee line at the, at the convention center in Vegas. And I would see the name badge and it would be X, Y, Z CPAs. And I would say, what are you doing for, you know, fill in the name professional yep. services. And, and I would ask them if they're happy with it and if they have any projects. And I was like, man, you're like very bottom of the funnel <laughs> have a conversation about selling. Well, one of the partners, I uh, was about to retire. So she's been in the business a long time. And she kind of sat there like, you know, a Jedi master and just said, well, I would be on a plane and I would be sitting next to a CPA and they would pull out their bag and it would say XYZ CPA on it. And I would say, oh, are you going to the conference? And they would say, yeah. And I would say, why? What's your life like? What do you want to get out of the conference? Yeah. And then we'd have a conversation the next three hours. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Um, really powerful. Really powerful. That you know exactly that that's extremely powerful. I'm just trying to think what a CPA conference would be like, but there you go. Probably <laughs> one of the tamest ones you'd ever go to. Anyway, mm -hmm. apologies to CPAs. I'm just joking. Um, the other part too, uh, Carla, is is the authenticity, and this has come up more and more, obviously since since COVID and since people kind of took a little bit of a, a step back and started going, you know, looking at what's important. And as you mentioned, rapport, relationship building. But authenticity is, is really critical. And and I have a fear sometimes that people are falling into this trap of, of, you know, there are people out there saying, I'll teach you how to be authentic and this is what you should do. And you go, no, 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 no. You don't teach somebody to be authentic. You, you help them 
uh, you help them actually uh, communicate their authenticity because you can't you can't make somebody authentic. Yeah, I you just kind of gave me goosebumps because <laughs> I was this isn't about the book, but it's it's yeah. all derivative. It's all close. Like sure. all the stories I'm telling you are like the DNA that came together to build the book. So um, I've got this team. I, I, I was a fraction. Sometimes I'm a fractional leader in my company. Mm -hmm. We have other consultants who will come in as a fractional leader, sometimes sure. CRO, VP of sales, things like that. So uh, I'm with this professional services firm. There's about six people on the team. I end up working for them about two years. And the first couple of months, it was about trust. And I was trying to understand their current world and where they want to go and, and, and build the steps to get there. Well, I made the meeting really safe so that people could be vulnerable. And if you, you know, if those of you that are listening here in sales, you have some rough days yeah. and, and there's some sales meetings. You're just like, I don't want to come and talk about wins and losses. Like, mm -hmm. I just want to like, I want to go work out. Or I want to go fix a cocktail or whatever. Right. So we, we started to build this culture where they could vent, they could come and share. And then we would process through it. Mm -hmm. One day I had a horrible day, horrible day. And so I'm on the call and you know, body language is all rough. And they're like, what's going on? I'm like, ah, you know, and I'm trying to keep my cool. It's like, I'm a consultant. I'm the leader of this organization. I got to be really buttoned up. And I was like, I'm just really mad. And I probably started to, to use some rougher language than that. And they all said, time out. I said, what? And they're like, you have been there for us every single year, every single month. If we have something, you create the space. We listen, you, you listen, you guide us forward. It's the least we can do for you. And I was just like, whoa, mm -hmm. what team, right? What about trust and, and being vulnerable? And so I let it all out. And so here I am, this leader of this company. I'm running this team. We've got quarterly goals, annual goals. Like it's high pressure, right? Yeah. And I'm spilling my guts out to them, you know? And that was one of the best meetings. And from there, we were even a tighter team. So I guess my invitation to all of you is, you know, when you even meet a one-to-one -one with a client or with a group, you know, if you can bring yourself forward and they know you're just a human sharing human experiences that they probably have as well, your currency of authenticity and trust and someone that they want to do business with. I'm going to tell you, maybe not every time, because I'm yep. sure there's a business out there. Someone's going, I could never do that in my business if I don't show I'm strong. And mm -hmm. maybe that's true. But I'm going to tell you, 99 point some percent of the time when you can bring your true self, amazing things happen. And guess what? They're going to start to reveal their their iceberg, what's under the water. And before you know it, you're going to be co-creating solutions together because you, you get each other. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the power we have of being salespeople. We can be that guide. Yeah. And, and it's great what you said there, because, you know, any, any engagement initially, like every, especially nowadays, people's defenses are up from the get go. Oh, you're a salesperson. So my defense. Are up. And as a sales, you know, many salespeople, they're like, their defenses are up and they're going, eh. so bringing authenticity into and being being your real self i mean from the get-go that's probably one of the fastest ways to break down that uh that distrust yeah i agree and you know you kind of alluded to you know as salespeople, sometimes we have baggage yes you know, oh, yeah. trash. a lot of times people in this industry will call it head trash so i had, was at a conference and i was speaking and after this conference this one guy comes up and it was a founders conference uh, early stage startups in, in tech space he goes hey do you do per personal coaching i was like look I do, but clearly there's something you want to talk to me right. about right now. And I don't fly out for a few hours. Let's go outside. So we went outside. We we're on this deck and we were talking and it's in the book. It's a great story if, if you want to explore kind of like how you get over things. But the short of it was he had some real hangups about being in sales. And mm -hmm. more or less, his father had always talked down about salespeople. They would come to sell yep. He's like, oh, look, here comes that sales guy. And so every time this entrepreneur came to the near end, of his presentation, he felt like he had to sell. And that's when this magic broke because he was right. so good at explaining the problem he was to solve with his tool and so good at connecting with people. But he put these, this clothes on that was artificial. And he was like, I can't close any deals. And as we process that, it was like, you know, man, this isn't about forcing or tricking or manipulating. This is about genuinely showing up who you are so that people can see you care and that you have a solution to help them. Just be that guy, be that founder that is excited about his technology and his solution and stay there and then ask people if they want to give it a try. Just do that. Guy starts crying. He's like, that's all I need to do. I'm like, that's all you need to do. <laughs> In the book, it's a great story. And I guess I would tell you, you know, for us, it is, it's just about bringing, bringing what you believe in forward, having the confidence to stand there and, and be okay that you might say something a little silly some days or a little uncomfortable. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And I love that story. I love that story as well, because uh, 
it, it's just a fa- it's just a fantastic story about the person realizing that you can be yourself. And the thing is, and this has been a mission, obviously, of Sales Pop and Pipeliner CRM is this to 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 bring sales to where it should be, where people shouldn't be ashamed of being salespeople. They should be proud of being salespeople. They should realize how what a pivotal role in society that it is. And how at the end of the day, when you just boil it down, what are you? You are bringing a solution to a problem. You're a conduit. That's fantastic. Think about that. You're solving people's problems. Um, but unfortunately, as you know, Carl, popular culture and societal biases have really built up a negative attitude to sales that we, that we have to we have to overcome. I mean, there's let's face it, at the end of the day, um, somebody in sales who's really really good can earn a lot of money, can impact a lot of lives, and, and all that, and more so than other roles that perhaps people think, oh, that's a better role than sales. You go, man, eh, not really. If if you take it to where it could go. Absolutely. The first couple pages of my book, Iceberg Selling, it's celebrating the sales person. And I actually think the first line is something like, I love salespeople because, you know, we make payroll, yep. we enable growth, we make the economy go forward, we're the fuel in the engine. Mm-hmm. We, we put, you know, we pay for colleges, we put presents under the tree, not even just our family, everybody's family. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. I point. would just say, you know, <laughs> well done, well done, keep doing it. Yeah, salespeople are the Santa Clauses of... Uh... There you go. Yeah, there you go. I like that. <laughs> well, listen, Carl, this has been fantastic. By the way, I have your next book. Uh, it's The Accidental Consultant. I think there is. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe make a movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, listen, all of Carl's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Carl, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Carl Becker. I am the founder of Improving Sales Performance. We're a consultancy where we come in and help build happy, high-performing sales organizations and kind of the small mid-market. I do keynote speaking at sales conferences, things like that, workshops. I've got a team of other consultants. If you kind of like our vibe of what I shared today, that's the type of people you're going to work with, people that really invest in a holistic look uh, Mm -hmm. at your sales organization and revenue growth, but focus on team, people's inner game, and really uh, try to bring out the best in groups and individuals. This has been great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, listen, this has been fantastic, Carl. I would encourage you to go check it out and mark your calendars. I'm sure you can order in advance, but mark your calendars October 31st for Iceberg Selling. Go check it out. Again, thanks, Carl. Thank you for watching, listening, and I will see you all again soon. (laughs) 